Hello everyone, I'm Shannon Slatton. Welcome to the Maple Grove Report. I am filling in for Dave Kaiser. I have Heidi Nelson here, City Manager for Maple Grove. How are you doing, Heidi? I'm good. Are Thank you, you surviving the cold weather? I am. It was a little chilly coming in today, but the, the sun is out, so that's a sure. good thing. Yes. Well, last night, Tuesday night, you had a very beefy work session. Let's we begin did. there with an update on the Community Center planning process. Yeah, so we had a work session on um, Tuesday, January 18th. Of course, we um, are meeting shift to Tuesday because of the Monday Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Um, two topics are uh, kind of up for discussion. Uh, we needed to circle back with the City Council and the Park Board on our, our Community Center planning. If uh, the viewers may recall, we've um, been working on a Community Center expansion renovation project project, kind of the bigger master plan project. Um, that project is uh, projected uh, to cost around $116 million. Um, we have local option sales tax authority from the state that will need to go to the voters in November of 22. Um, so voters will see that on their ballot. Um, so needed to revisit with the council about and the park board about what that project entails, as well as um, if that local option sales tax um, funding mechanism isn't approved, um, there is a project that needs to occur at the community center. We have structural issues that need to be addressed, mechanical systems, electrical systems that need to be updated, um, as well as some changes to how the building is set up. We need to make some operational changes to um, help us over there. So that project, kind of what we're calling the minimum investment project, is estimated to cost $59 million, and that project would um, be paid by the general tax levy. So kind of two different um, projects here that we're talking about. One, of course, would rely on that local option sales tax, the other um, would be kind of a tax levy project. I do encourage uh, residents to go out to the website. Lots of information contained on our agenda um, for this work session item. Uh, the kind of the proposals for the or the plans for the building as well as more detailed information about those those different funding mechanisms. Um, in addition, we've been working with a consultant for App Strategies on a communications plan, uh, not only for the project but also for these different funding uh, pieces and we're going to be getting out with some communications and education here in the coming weeks and wanted to kind of finalize those things with the council and park board. Uh, one last item related to this community center project was we're going to be putting together a community center working group uh, that would include our stakeholders so those folks that would be um, have space in the building or users in the building so the the hockey association um, uh, representatives from the arts community Probably the, the seniors, seniors. Yes. the seniors for sure our teen center group the historical society those types of groups that would be utilizing the building so um, when we come back to our next meeting on February 7th, we'll have kind of an outline of who might serve on that working group and then we want to get that group um, underway um, at f later in February, basically after that February 7th meeting. One other topic was discussed at the work session and that was um, we had the Historical Society, Maple Grove Historical Society in to discuss um, the CAC, our former CAC Citizens Advisory Committee had done a report on historical societies. Um, the council had reviewed that once before, but this in invited the Historical Society in to talk about that and they've been looking at you know some space needs as well. Uh, the council direction was that they would be um, part of the community center project in that some display space would be included for the historical society so that they could um, display a lot of their historical artifacts um, and you know really tell the story of the history of Maple Grove in a high traffic area so that sure. will be included with the community center planning as we go forward so that wrapped up our work session for January 18th all right a good one to get the year started off and then busy council meeting as well mm -hmm. few items pulled from the consent agenda to talk about starting with a late quality commission candidate yeah so we have an appointment to the late quality commission um, this is Brennan O'Callaghan um, he'll be serving uh, representing the Fish Lake, Fish Lake there on mm -hmm. Lake Quality Commission. And then just a couple questions from Councilmember Jager on the Fountains area improvements. Um, we had some bids come back and kind of a wide range of bids there, but um, I think the Ken Nashville, our public works director, mm -hmm. was pretty happy with where the low responsible bidder came in. So that work will be moving forward early in the summer months. All right, and that will be exciting to see as well.
Now moving on to one retirement that I'm sure will, will make waves. Yes. Firefighter Greg Bodine, been with the city for more than 20 years, one of the first firefighters out at St Fire Station 5. It yeah. was great to hear him talk. Yeah, so Greg Bodine, of course, retiring from our fire department. 21 years of service, and uh, Chief Bush referred to him as a, a two-hatter, um, serving in Robbinsdale as well, uh, as well as um, some roles with North Memorial. So very involved in the fire service and has also served as a chaplain um, in much of his capacity in the fire service. So he will be um, very missed at Station 5, carries a big presence out there, but we wish him and his family all the best in his retirement. Absolutely. And as you say goodbye to Greg Bodine, you said hello to a few other public servants. Yeah, so we had the honor of swearing in new three new patrol officers uh, at our meeting. Uh, we had Samuel Frang, Danae Dozier, and Jackson Carlson that were sworn in and all three of them have completed their field training and are now out on solo patrol and so um, we're grateful for them joining our department and we look forward to their many years of service here in Maple Grove. And that's always a great moment when the families come forward. It is, yep. And they're a part of that decision as well. Yep. All right, moving into public hearings, the Evanswood Project, that's a big one. <clears throat> yeah, so this is up in the northwest quadrant of Maple Grove, um, you know, north of County Road 30, kind of up to where the Hindu Temple is, uh, east of County Road 101. Uh, Evanswood is a, about a 400 lot subdivision. You know, we haven't seen a subdivision of this size really since the recession of, you know, 2006. So this is a big one and um, kind of opens the door for development out there in the northwest quadrant of Maple Grove. So both townhomes and single family homes. Townhomes and single family in this Evanswood project and it sits up just right south of the Hindu temple. Um, this one, the project, about $30 million worth of infrastructure going in out here. Um, the first pieces of what will be Arbor Ridge Parkway, a new parkway out there in northwest Maple Grove, sewer water extensions, those kinds of things. And we also have some shoreline stable work that we're going to be doing along the Rush Creek out there. So this is a, a big project um, that will be getting out to bid here and that work will get underway this summer. All right, that will be exciting to follow. Uh, moving into community and economic development items, a variance yeah. regarding Rice Lake. Yeah, so this is on 91st Avenue. Um, we have a row of about 19 homes that were built along Rice Lake um, prior to the time where we had a 75 foot setback um, along the lake shore for, for, new, for homes that are built. Uh, so this one uh, was built during that time frame where the house is a little closer to the lake and these folks were looking to make an addition to their home and so, um, you know, that anomaly in their in their plat and how their home was constructed, um, you know, kind of provides a substantiation for a variance there and, and others have been dealt with in the same way where we have that sort of anomaly in the lot size. Um, so they were provided approval to add this addition to the front of their home. Um, so we'll look forward to that construction likely in the spring. Very good, staying in Maple Grove. Yes. Uh, then pet suites, planned unit development, dogs and cat lovers will be excited <coughs> to hear about this one. Yeah, so this one's right up off of Upland Lane, just kind of south of the hospital area, north of the bell tower, south of the, the a gas station that's there near the woods. Um, if folks drive by today, they might think it looks just kind of like a swale <laughs> that's sure. there in between the two buildings, but it's really old right away. Um, that's been sitting unused right away for a number of years since the um, County Road 30 project was done. And so uh, the city went about seeking developers for this piece of land and to bring it into use. And so a nice addition up here with pet suites, they do grooming, boarding, as well as daycare. There. Sure. Sure, and anybody that's tried to find a place for their dog or cat on a yeah. holiday weekend knows that yes. these places are in high demand. Yeah, lots of new pets out there sure. from the pandemic. Absolutely. All right, moving on to what's next for the Planning Commission? Yes, yeah, so we have a big Planning Commission meeting coming up on January 31st. We just have a lot of development activity um, coming for the next come. Uh, the summer months. Um, we have a new medical office up on the Maple Grove Parkway area. Uh, Weston Commons, this is a, a townhome development up off 105th, kind of near where the Northwoods Church. There's a next phase of that. Uh, we're going to be talking about the AMC Theater site. That one's gotten a lot of media attention recently with the, the final closure of the theater. Um, the owners of that property are looking to kind of redevelop that site, mm -hmm. add some buildings out in the parking lot there. Um, the theater itself um, is proposed to become 
become um, a floor and decor store. So kind of leaving uh, that theater use behind and, and really um, remodeling that building to serve as more of a retail um, storefront. But it does open the opportunity there then with that reduced need for parking to do something in the parking lot and it adds a few restaurants um, out in the edges of the parking lot. So a lot more information to come on this AMC site uh, and it'll be good to get the feedback from the Planning Commission and the Council on that. Sure. We're also going to be looking at a concept phase for the third or concept concept plan for the third phase of the Arbor Lakes Business Park. So Arbor Lakes Business Park phase two is currently under construction just east of the fountains and this would be south of that area up mm. to the freeway just um, east of Lowe's there. So um, this is a big development almost 60 acres worth of development there um, and so we'll get some feedback from the Planning Commission and Council on that plan. Uh, the Summerwell project is coming back. This is 105th Maple Grove Parkway townhome project. This would be their final approval for development stage and then looking ahead to February we do have uh, an apartment project that would be up north of Menards up in that area recently we did talk about a senior apartment project senior affordable apartment project up there this would be more of a, um, a market rate called the Edison apartment so that one likely to come forward at the first planning commission meeting in February so very busy January very busy yes very, it kind of shows things are really ramping up they are yeah yeah, it's going to look right. to be a very busy construction season. Okay, for sure. All right, moving into public works items. Uh, start with a, another easement. This one's a neighbor dispute. Yeah, so we had um, a situation with a neighbor uh, wanting to subdivide their lot. That subdivision was approved, and so another home would be constructed on that lot. There was some um, disagreement about lot lines, and there was an old underlying easement for mm. a road um, that would have been constructed. This property is located just off of Weaver Lake Road across from the lake um, kind of was platted many years ago to be kind of a grid like road system that wasn't ever developed in that way so the city really doesn't have a need for this old road easement um, but there was some issues with titles uh, or the I should say the the property boundaries and a desire to have some survey work done to make sure everyone understood what that was so um, what this really did was to um, vacate kind of one quarter of this easement and allow that property owner that is subdividing to move forward and um, you'll likely see further vacations come forward in the future to deal with the other kind of four quadrants of, of this old easement and clean that up but um, this one uh, got approval to deal with that easement on kind of what would be the north side of that property there. Very good. Anything else on public works items to highlight? Yeah, we have a couple things coming up. As folks may be aware, there was um, a transportation and uh, infrastructure bill passed at the federal level. Uh, the initials for it are IIJA. Um, that money is, not, there's some of those funds that are coming down to the state, but there's also some federal programs that um, will have uh, additional funding available to them. So we did get the notice of funding opportunity from the RAISE program, which is a grant program we've applied to before to try to secure additional funding for the 610 completion so sure. we're gonna um, throw our hat in the ring again on that one it's due in April so hopefully they'll move quickly on that review and get some of that money out the door for these projects we do hope um, to get that 610 completion project constructed in 2023 so um, time is nigh here to get the rest of that money um, in place and we're hoping um, you know either the money here at the state or, or through this federal process will become available for that all right very good yes um, administration items yeah so just a couple things coming up for the council calendar and and um, the le upcoming legislative session this coming Friday morning we have our I-94 West Coalition uh, legislative breakfast in Rogers and again this is a group that focuses on investment in the I-94 corridor so this group's had a lot of success of course in the last few years with the recent investment in the I-94 corridor but they continue to advocate for the completion of 610 so we'll be talking with our sure. legislative representatives about that on um, Friday morning as well as if you go further up the 94 corridor there's a gap now between Albertville and Monticello for that third lane and, and the desire to get that completed so that we would have kind of that full third lane improvement all the way up through Clearwater so um, much investment happening out there on the corridor and focus on getting all of those pieces completed and then we have the I-94 Chamber of Commerce State of the City event that will be on the 25th of January that's at 
Rush Creek over the noon hour. And then we have the um, MLC, the Municipal Legislative Commission Legislative Breakfast um, in Edina the morning of January 27th. And so that is, um, the MLC is made up of kind of larger suburbs that have similar um, tax bases, economic traits. And so uh, we have a legislative platform to represent um, those larger suburbs. And that group will be getting together with their legislators that morning as well. And then of course we look forward to the start of the session on, on the January 31st, 31st and, and we'll get underway. And this week we were pleased to learn that we were included in the governor's bonding bill recommendation for the Maple Grove Community Center. We have a bonding request in for 18 million to support this regional facility. And um, we are grateful to be included in the governor's recommendations. And so um, we look forward to working with our, our local legislators and, and those capital investment committees as the session moves forward. All right, good news for sure. Yes. All right. Anything else to touch on there? Or do we want to move on to a few new businesses that have opened shop? Yeah, so I think that wraps up the council meeting. Um, new businesses opening that we've been able to celebrate. A lot of focus on fitness. Yes. <laughs> Especially here in January. So <laughs> New Crunch Fitness. This is a 30,000 square foot fitness facility. Um, they're located um, up kind of by Target next between Haskell's, um, near Haskell's and Slumberland up there. Um, so we were there for that uh, grand opening. Nice new gym offering in town. They have a great um, spin room and um, massage beds, all child kinds of care child offered. care. Yeah, all kinds of and they already have offerings. classes going too. They do. They have group fitness classes there as well as you know a broad range of fitness equipment and weights and those kinds of things. Um, so good to check out Crunch Fitness. And then we have Discover Strength on Main Street, um, which also opened recently. Um, they're a fitness option with a focus on 30-minute strength work workouts for those who are short on time. Sure. I might need to check that one out. <laughs> All right, I think so. And I believe you can even go work out in your business attire. So there's no oh. excuse. Just go and get a workout in. <laughs> I we'll might see. have to Something look at to that check one. Out. All right, but there are some job openings as yeah. well in the city of Maple Grove. Good place to work. Yeah, we have a lot of job openings. Not only, you know, I think um, most folks are aware we're always hiring for part-time seasonal positions, but lately we've had um, a lot of retirements and mm -hmm. so, um, and some restructuring and some new positions here added at the beginning of the year. So we have active recruitments going on for some full-time regular positions in administration, the community center and public works. And so if you're looking for a new opportunity, we encourage you to check those out on the website. All right, just go there and they can find out what they need to know. Yeah. And then if you want to go jump in a frozen lake <laughs> for a good cause, there's right. the polar plunge. Have yeah, you we, ever done that? I haven't, but I, I, keep, I keep threatening to do it one of these years. <laughs> I, I think I'll get talked into it at some point. But Saturday, February, February 5th, um, it's the 15th annual Polar Plunge, and that's at Fish Lake Regional Park. Um, our police department and the Maple Grove Ambassadors, of course, are active participants sure. in this, and I know the Maple Grove Rotary is putting together a team, too. So um, plungemn.org for details and registration, and if you're interested in joining, um, I think there's information there about how to reach out to do that as well. They'll take you. You could do it. Yes. All right, some events coming up to honor Black History Month, of course, in February. Yeah, so this is is a program over at the community center. Our Parks and Recreation Department is honoring Black History Month with a youth literacy and visual art contest. Um, there are two age groups for the contest, ages 14 and under, and then 15 to 18. Youth are invited to share their talent in writing, poetry, and art, and submissions are accepted through February 4th. Um, details on how to participate can be found on the Maple Grove Parks and Recreation Facebook page. Um, and then there's an opportunity to win prizes, and finalists will be featured on the Facebook page during February which is Black History Month and I know last year they did this event as well and we had a lot of great submittals and a lot of great artwork um, that we used throughout the year so right. great project. It'll be fun to see what folks come up with. Yes. Uh, moving back to fitness for a moment, the community yeah. center gym, a <clears throat> few changes there. Yeah, so reservations are now required for the gym as there are some capacity limits that we've implemented there. Um, details can be found on the city website or on the Facebook page. Um, reservations need to be made online for the gym. All right, very good. A new sport to tell us about. Yeah. Yeah, I'll so let you say this. How yeah, do you pronounce this? Croaky curl. Croaky curl. Very good. Right. So this is kind of a variation on curling. Um, I don't know what the croaky stands for. Because you don't. Want I've heard this is fun to watch, and if it you is. see it, you'll understand a yeah. little closer. And I did see one of the local news stations here in the area covering it the other morning. I think they had one set up in Stillwater. But our Parks and Recreation Department um, is introducing Croaky Curl to Maple Grove. Um, the game is a large-scale hybrid of curling and the board game. Oh, there we go, Croaky Knoll. 
There we go. I don't know that I've one. I've never played it. But it originated in Canada. Of course it did. All right, so the Parks and Recreation <laughs> crew is putting up the rink this week, um, and everyone is invited to stop by Central Park and try this fun new activity. Um, Saturday and Sunday, January 22 and 23 from 1 to 4. And then um, after this weekend, the rink will be up for the remainder of the winter and available for play. And you do use like a stone, like the curling, like curling? stone. I think it's a little bit lighter. Um, and the, the point of it is to kind of get that stone into there's a... Um, kind of they call it a button in the middle of the ice it's it's ice mm -hmm. um, kind of a rink there um, so look for that and I know we have our wonders of winter event coming up I'll go right into that on Saturday February 5th and, and the croaky curl of course would be available that day as well that uh, Saturday February 5th so big busy day it we is. have the polar plunge and then wonders of winter um, wonders of winter one to four that day at Central Park um, we will have um, outdoor activities with the wagon rides, snowshoeing, large kite display s'mores, and of course the skating loop would be open and croaky curl that day. And that's always popular. So really more reasons to come out and enjoy winter. Yes. You just have to embrace it to yes. get through it. Yes, and dress well and come out and enjoy it. And their Park and Rec is doing a great job about giving you a reason to yes. come out and enjoy it. Yes. All right, Maple Grove Fire Prevention. What do you guys have coming up as far as programming? Yeah, so we offer a variety of programs for residents, um, civic organizations, scouts, businesses, um, opportunities related to fire safety. And this is so important right now. We continue to see, you know, structure fires, home fires, that kind of a thing. Um, and so we really, you know, encourage people to pay attention. We've had a couple tragic carbon monoxide situations, um, you know, in greater Minnesota. And so um, really important to make sure that you're, you know, you're checking your smoke alarm. We have a senior smoke alarm check program, fire extinguisher fire extinguisher training, home safety survey, um, fire safety talk, and fire station tour. All these programs are available through our fire prevention program. If you just want to give a call up to the government center and talk to somebody in fire prevention. Um, also, you can check out the fire, Maple Grove Fire and Rescue Facebook page for more information. And I've been a part of a few scout groups going through this. And you yes. teach a kid how to use a smoke detector, how to change the batteries, why yep. that's important. Yep. It's very important. It is very important. Good. Yes. All right, recreational burn permits. Yep. Yeah, so this is an annual process that we go through that we ask people to um, get a permit. It's a, it's a no-cost permit. It's more of an effort for us to um, make sure that folks understand what the regulations are and get some education to them about those recreational fires that folks are having in their backyards. Um, Permits are annual and they expire on December 31st each year, and so now is the time to review um, quick and easy process on the fire department webpage. All right, go there for more information. And then it's not too early <coughs> to talk about Maple Grove Days. Yeah, so we have six months to our annual community celebration. Um, mark your calendars this year for July 13th to the 17th. Um, the Maple Grove Community Organization is looking for volunteers to help with these festivities as well. So more information available at mgco.org. All right, find out more there. And then this is a challenge I've seen other suburbs talk about as well, the plastic-free challenge. That yeah. seems tough, but possible. Yeah, so Hennepin County is leading this effort. Plastic-free challenge is a great way to adopt new habits to lower your impact on the environment. Uh, registration is open online for the online challenge. It starts February 1 and really runs through the whole month of February. Uh, the program has uh, 70 actions that you can choose from in seven categories to try to reduce your use, your use of plastics, um, and then you you can create a team um, to take the challenge on with your family, neighbors, friends, and colleagues. And then kind of a longer uh, website address there, but if you Google sure. the Hennepin Plastic, Plastic Free, Free Challenge, um, I'm sure it'll come up for you. And it's probably one of those things you can try just one thing and see what a difference right. that you can make, not yes. like the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I think there's just yeah. lots of ideas about how you might think about, you know, that in your home and little things you can do to reduce your use of plastics. All right, very good. Lots going on, Heidi. You yes. guys are busy over there at Maple Grove. <laughs> we are. Well, thank you very much for being here for the Maple Grove Report. I'm Shannon Slatton. Next meeting coming up on February 7th. That's right. Until then, check in with the website maplegrovemn.gov. I'm Shannon Slatton with the Maple Grove Report.